So our first panelist this afternoon will be Dr. Yoshihiro Kawaoka, who established the technique of reverse genetics, which allows the generation of designer influenza viruses. This technology, coupled with the findings regarding the weakening of deadly influenza viruses, has been used to develop candidate bird flu vaccines and is also used to generate live attenuated influenza vaccines. Dr. Kawaoka discovered what makes bird flu viruses so deadly and what makes the bird flu jump from birds to humans. He has also discovered why the 1918 Spanish flu was Spanish flu virus was so deadly. And as a founder of Flugen, Dr. Kawaoka is developing a universal flu vaccine which is currently in clinical trials. In addition to his groundbreaking influenza research, Dr. Kawaoka also studies Ebola virus and his group has worked in Sierra Leone during the Ebola outbreak from 2014 to 2016 and he continues to work with Ebola survivors. He is also currently developing an Ebola vaccine, which will enter clinical trials in 2019. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Yoshihira Kawaoka. Great, thank you very much for the introduction. <clears throat> so this is the uh, title that I uh, got, uh, it's very long. So, um, but the bottom line, Yes, here we go. <clears throat> so I'm addressing this question. How can science help us prepare for future influenza pandemics? Um, so Laurie's presentation was great for my, um, the inter great introduction for my, uh, my presentation. So the, just to set the stage, we have experienced three pandemics in the previous century and one pandemic um, in this century. The uh, causative agent is influenza A virus. <coughs> oh, that's okay. Um, so this virus contains two uh, surface glyc proteins, uh, hemagglutinin and neuraminidase, H and NA. Based on the properties of these uh, proteins, they uh, classified into H1 through 18 and 1 through um, 11. So that's how we call H1N1, H5N1, or H7N9. <clears throat> okay, so the theme of this uh, meeting is a century after the 1918 influenza pandemic. So I'm going to use Spanish influenza as an example to address this question. Now, Spanish influenza virus did not exist but Jeffrey Taubenberger's group uh, sequenced the entire genome of the 1918 virus. And back in 1999, we established a technique called reverse genetics, which allowed us to make um, influenza virus from cloned cDNA, which is a sequence. And with the... Um, the sequencing information of Spanish influenza virus and this technology, um, we can now address this question. Why was Spanish influenza more deadly than other pandemic influenza? Now, we want to study this uh, pathogenicity of this virus in, in non-human primate, but since we are making 1918 virus, and testing pathogenicity in non-human primates, we thought we should do this experiment at the highest containment laboratory called BSL-4. So we collaborated with Dr. Heinz Feldman. He is now at the NIH, but he was at the, uh, in Canada at that time. And um, from my group, Darwin Kobasa and Hideki Ebihara went to um, Dr. Feldman's, group, uh, Feldman's lab and performed the work. So here we have two viruses, 1918 and 2001 seasonal influenza virus that we get infected in winter. 
and compared pathogenicity in non-human primates. Seven animals were infected with 1918 virus. Three animals were infected with seasonal influenza virus. On day three, all the animals in the 1918 group lost appetite and no change in the uh, um, seasonal influenza group. We took some anim animals for pathological studies. Now, remaining five animals in the 1918 group became sick, and one of them became really sick. We had to euthanize this animal. No change in the seasonal influenza group. Now, remaining uh, three animals in the 1918 group became really sick, so we had to euthanize these animals. So Spanish influenza virus is lethal to macaque, and this is the only influenza virus that is lethal in non-human primates. Now, histopathologically, there's some mild inflammation. Uh, this is the lung tissue. Mild inflammation in animals infected with uh, 2001 seasonal influenza virus. But the lung of animals infected with 1918 virus filled with fluid and inflammatory cells. And these brown cells are the indication of the virus replication in lung. So 1918 virus replicates in the lung. Now, seasonal influenza viruses do not replicate in human lung. <clears throat> and this is the same histopathology as Spanish influenza victims. So Spanish influenza virus is uniquely pathogenic. Now, humans get inf infected with influenza virus, but influenza virus infect many different animals, including sea mammals. But we now know that uh, all these influenza viruses in different animal species originally came from wild waterfowl. And in fact, as uh, Laurie mentioned, 1918 virus uh, came from uh, avian species. And 1957 and 1968 pandemics involve avian influenza virus. Now, 19 2009 virus came from swine, as we heard. So there are viruses out there that we need to watch. And one of them is H5N1 avian influenza virus, so-called bird flu. This virus was first identified in um, southern China in 1996 and caused an outbreak in Hong Kong in 1997, infecting 18 people. Of those, six died. Since 2007, this virus spread Asian countries. And in 2005, there was a major outbreak caused by this virus in Qinghai Lake in wild waterfowl. And the wild waterfowl took this virus to Europe and Africa. Thus far, more than 800 people were known to be infected with this virus, and of those, over 450 people died. So humans get infected with the H5N1 virus sporadically from bird species. But human-to-human -human transmission has been limited. But if airborne transmission occurs, then this virus may cause pandemic. So it is important for us to understand the trans airborne transmissibility of viruses in non-human animals to examine the pandemic potential. And of course, we can't use humans, but we use ferrets. <clears throat> for this purpose. Because when ferrets are infected with human influenza viruses, they show symptoms like humans, high fevers, uh, high fever, runny nose, sneezing. So this is how we test the uh, airborne transmissibility of influenza virus. So we infect ferret with a virus, and next day we place a cage containing uninfected ferret right next to the infected ferret. But there is a gap between the two cages. So the only way the virus is transmitted from infected to uninfected is via respiratory droplets. 
And using this system, we tested airborne transmissibility of H5N1 virus. <clears throat> now, this H5N1 virus did not transmit under the condition we tested. But with four mutations in one of the uh, genes called the hemagglutinin, the virus transmitted via respiratory droplet. Similar work has been reported by Dr. Ron Fouché in, in the Netherlands. Another virus that we need to watch is H7 and 9 virus. This virus was first identified in China in 2013, and every winter since then, the virus infected many humans. <clears throat> but in 2017 and 18 winter, the number of human cases dropped dramatically because Chinese government vaccinated poultry uh, in September of 2017. When this virus was first discovered in humans in 2013, this virus, no, virus was non-pathogenic um, in chickens, did not kill chickens. Although uh, people, when, when people get infected with this virus, uh, many people got really sick. But this virus became highly pathogenic in, in 2016, killing chickens, 100% experimentally. And people have been infected with this high pathogenic form of, the, um, to, of, the, of, the, of this H7 and 9 virus. So we tested uh, transmissibility of this virus in the system that I described. And the result is shown in this slide. So the positive control 2009 pandemic virus caused pandemic in humans. So it transmits very well in this setting. We saw transmission in all three pairs of ferrets. H5N1 virus, avian virus, as I described, did not transmit to any ferrets uh, uh, without any mutation. The low pathogenic uh, H7 and 9 virus identified in 2013 transmitted in one of the three, ferrets, uh, three pairs of ferrets. And the other group also reported similar results. But highly pathogenic H7 and 9 viruses, virus transmitted three out of the four ferret, uh, pairs of ferrets. And of those, these two ferrets died and these two ferrets who were uh, infected via respiratory droplets also died. And we detected virus in the brain. So what this tells you is that the highly pathogenic H7 and 9 virus transmits well in ferrets via respiratory droplets, and the ferrets die when exposed to even a small amount of virus in respiratory droplets. So we need, and um, <clears throat> so these are the scientific findings. And these, based on these scientific findings, we can evaluate pandemic potential of the virus. Um, CDC established a tool called IRAT, and, and Dr. Katz, uh, I think, is going to talk about this more. But using this tool, one can tell that the um, H7 and 9 virus uh, is the viruses that we, uh, we are most concerned about. Uh, to control the influenza, we have two options, of antivirals and vaccines. And Dr. Fauci is going to disc discuss the uh, vaccines. So I'm going to briefly discuss antivirals. We have influenza drugs uh, targeted against the uh, neuraminidase. Neuraminidase is the protein on the surface of the virus. Three-dimensional structure of this protein was resolved by Dr. Leiber and Coleman. And based on the structure of this protein, drugs were made <coughs> and currently available. Another influenza drug was recently approved and targeting uh, polymerase. But as we heard, uh, drug-resistant influenza virus have emerged and spread um, worldwide. So we need better uh, antiviral compounds. So coming back to these uh, two questions, 
So to, uh, addressing to the uh, first question, um, scientific advances have allowed us to understand the molecular basis of the pathogenicity of influenza viruses as exemplified by Spanish influenza virus studies and assess the pandemic potential of influenza viruses in non-human reservoirs and develop uh, anti-influenza drugs and more efficacious vaccines. And scientific priorities, there are many scientific priorities for pandemic preparedness, but I'm not going to list them, but I want to make one point, that is basic research to more completely understand the biology of influenza. And without this, we cannot produce more efficacious countermeasures. Thank you very much for your attention.